Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as my website at pivotings.com. So this is the second video in a series on my DIY RV solar installation videos. And this video is gonna cover wiring your RV and then also wiring your panels together. The first video uh, was you know, how I got my panels up here installed on my roof and this mount built. And now I need to go over getting electricity from the roof all the way down to the bin where I'm gonna house all my other solar elements. So there's three ways, three really common ways to get your cables run through your roof or through, you know, from your roof down to your basement. One is to go through ceiling vents, the other is go down the refrigerator vent, and the most obvious and possibly dangerous is to drill a hole straight through your roof. So the first thing I want to figure out in this whole process of getting the electricity from the roof down to the bin is where exactly I'm going to run my cables. Now I have ruled out the option of running them through the refrigerator vent down you know, drilling holes into bins and then drilling holes through bins. I've ruled that out. One, uh, because of the little bit extra work, but two, because it adds on like, you know, maybe 20 or more feet to my cables. And you know, that just adds up, uh, plus the multiple holes I'll have to drill all throughout the RV. So I, I'm going to either do the hole in the roof or run it through the vent in the bathroom here. By the way, you might be having an optical illusion. Uh, I'm using this camera angle and you are seeing me in the mirror. So you can see my hand here. Um, this is the edge of the mirror uh, and that bin is the reflection and I really wanted it right here because this is where I'm dealing with. So anyway, if you're wondering like how the camera is set up, uh, it's sitting on my toilet and I'm standing in front of the mirror looking at the camera through the mirror. So my first thought was, oh, I'll just put a hole in the roof above my distribution panel because that's where all my electrical stuff is. That is on the other side of this wall. And I thought, hey, if I drill a hole in the roof above my distribution panel where all my electrical is going, that doesn't seem like a good choice because of you know potential leaking in my main power center. So I thought, hey, if I put it through the bathroom wall, I don't care if uh, you know some of my bathroom uh, cabinet things get wet in the case, hopefully it would never happen, but in the case that there is a leak. So I am here trying to figure out, can I put a hole you know, through this and access the raceway where all my other electrical cables run, then I can match that into where the other cables are going, where there's already holes drilled down into the bin. So my first thought was, you know, that is roughly right around here and I'll just knock a hole out in the wall here uh, and then, you know, run a snake down, see if I can, you know, find where it's going. But when I, just now when I open this, of course, there's always more things that are going to get in the way than you anticipate. When I open this, I see that it's like solid wood behind here, but it is not solid wood here. And so I thought, oh crap, I was planning to put the hole here. No one would ever see it. And then it could go up through the roof, uh, you know, or through the, the vent if I wanted to do that. So then I was like, well, do I want to put a hole here, you know? Then I was like, hey, oh my gosh, there's already some electrical from the electrical outlet down here. So my first task, I'm going to remove this and I highly suspect that there is already a hole here that accesses that raceway. So that's what I'm gonna start. Not totally obvious yet, but uh, yeah, I might need to remove this bottom panel to figure out how these cables are going in and maybe make a bigger hole wherever they're coming from. The raceway for my distribution panel is pretty much right, you know, along here inside the wall. And here is my distribution panel. To access that from this side, I need to take off all the screws and stuff and Oh my god, I don't want to do that. So I'm hoping I can access that raceway. You know, I might just need to put a hole in the wall in the bathroom. But down here, so most of the cables, 
they come out here and then they run along there. And I think that there might be one other spot down here where those cables might be coming out, but I don't know uh, where they would be going to. Okay, so I did find that those two white cables are coming down and they're coming out down here. They actually connect into this. This must be another on the same circuit. This is my GFC eye circuit that the bathroom is. So that must be another one. And then I'm guessing up here they connect or something and then, you know, then they go out in one of the big power cables. So what does that confirm? It basically means that here, let's get this put up here. Basically means that I can access that raceway in here. Now I need to decide, do I remove this and try to make the hole bigger? Where it doesn't seem like this hole is going through something thin. You know, like this is thin, this is thicker. So I may just make my own hole, maybe as low as possible, just in case it's more solid up here or something. Anyway, I think I'm gonna make my own hole. By the way, probably the safest thing to do, and I mean, I'll just admit it, I'm gonna leave my power on, is to turn off your power because I'm drilling through a wall and there's cables on the other side. Here I go. <laughs> All right, and I do see an open space over there. Fingers crossed, it did goes down there. I've got some leftover cable, like some of this kind of tend to that I took out when I converted my 30 amp original system to a dual phase 50 amp system. So this cabling that I had to cut out previously, I still have it. It's very rigid. So I'm going to see, I'm going to use that as a snake, feed that down and cross my fingers that I see it come out under the dinette. So I remember when we were feeding cables, the new cables for the 50 amp system on the other side, you know, in the distribution panel down the same raceway. There's so many wires down there now that like it was really hard. So I'm hoping I can find a good path. And if I can get this threaded through when I get my new cables to bring up to the ceiling, I'll tape those cables to the end of this and, you know, yank this out and hopefully bring those cables up. Well, unfortunately, the thing that I feared, which was that raceway being too full of too many cables now, I think that's the case. I just could not get, you know, that one thin 10-2 cable down. I thought, how am I going to get two thicker cables through there when I can barely get, or not, e not even get that other one through? So unfortunately, I spoke a little too soon. <laughs> I thought, oh, I don't want to go through the refrigerator vent. But um, after that, I was like, well, I'll just go through the closet because you know I can just drop the cables through the closet in the back bedroom. And I thought, well, geez, you know, I'll I'll be putting the cables farther back anyway. I'm gonna have to make them longer. Why not just go through here? I don't have to do a hole in the roof, and I'm doing long cables anyway so now my task is to figure out so I know the thing comes down here I've definitely seen the vent so easy to drop them here however there's a wood floor I need to investigate you know can I put cables from here I don't even know I need to look in here and see um, so anyway that is my next step is to figure out uh, the logistics for running the cables this way Okay, shoot. Yeah, cables are not running because there's cables here uh, for the electrical that goes here. And I've opened this up and I can see the cables going down. They're not going here. So I'm gonna go inside underneath the refrigerator. I bet you I'll find them there. Okay, so I just got this door off and oh my God, the worst thing is, uh, I don't know, can you see me? <laughs> The worst thing is when you're in the middle of like a big project, slightly intimidating project, and you find another project. Oh, I had a leak here and oh my effing word, it's leaking. 
Oh my god. Anyway, whole other video and I'm seriously not even going to worry about it now. Uh, oh my god. But at least I know uh, probably where that leak is from. I did a video on it. I honestly can't even remember what the final fix was, but I bet it's back there. So, um, oh my God. Anyway, back to the original project. I can see the cables come there. There they are. And if I look underneath here, which the camera might not be able to catch, I can see cables going under there. And in all honesty, I don't know where the cables are going. And if they're going into the floor, I am not running cables. I, I can't do that. Look at this way back there. How the heck am I going to run cables over there? So, I can see some colored, some like cables over there. Uh, you know what? You know what? Because I am ready to make this simple and get this done. Uh, I think what I need to do, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run the cables down. Okay, easy. I can easily get them here. You know what? I'm just gonna run them up along the, the uh, whatever you call that, kitchen counter bottom area, and then in this bin that I have super easy access to, I'm just gonna drill a, drill a hole down to the bin. I know where the bin is, then just go through the back of that bin, through the back of the other bin, and into where the batteries and all that stuff's gonna be. I just figured that out, and uh, the universe is working on my side because I just realized if I go down in that cabinet where I've got like uh, all my, you know, cleaning chemicals and my vacuum, that goes into the bin that's connected already to the other bin where all my stuff's gonna go. So I don't even, you know what? Those cables will never even be outside except for on the roof. They, I don't have to cut a hole in any bin because that's the bin that connects. Yeah! Oh my god! Ease! I love it! Oh my god. Okay. I feel better. I feel strong enough to now know that I have a leak to deal with <laughs> on top of all this. So my next step is to measure how long of a cable I'm going to need because I'll need that uh, length number to determine the actual size of gauge of wire that I'll be getting. So how do I know what size of cable to get? Well, now that I've done my measurements, and full measurements, and I've got about 30 feet, I'm gonna have five feet for good measure. I wonder if that's where that comes from. And now I need to know what ampacity or how many amps I'm gonna be running through that cable so I can determine the correct size gauge wire to get. So this is where some decision making and um, creativity comes into play. As discussed in previous videos, the way in which you connect your panel arrays will either increase or maintain volts and slash or amps. And by the way, this is the same exact information for batteries. However, just because you connect your solar panels in one way doesn't mean you need to connect your batteries in the same way. I have four 8.5 volt grape solar panels. The panel wattage is 160. So using the basic formula for amps, volts, and watts, that makes the panels about nine amps, 8.65. So there are two slash three ways to connect these panels, and it's either in series or parallel. And then the slash three would be using series and parallel in one array setup. Series connections means you connect positive to negative, positive to negative, and so on. Series connections make the volts additive. So it's 18.5 plus 18.5, that, 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 that. An array connected in this way would yield 74 volts at 8.65 amps. Parallel connections means you connect positive to positive to positive and negative to negative to negative, making the amps additive, which would be 8.65 plus 8.65 plus 8.65 plus 8.65. That array would yield a 34.6 amp array at 18.5 volts. 
So before we get into using both types of connections in one array, let's go over why this information is important. First of all, you need to know your maximum amount of amps that will be running through your cables so that you can determine your cable size. Connecting these panels in series at 8.65 amps with a 35 foot cable, I could use an 8 gauge cable. In parallel though, at 34.6 amps, I need to up the size to 4 or even a 2 gauge cable. That's how the varying amps make a difference in your panel arrays. However, you may want to adjust your setup according to how many volts you want to output. This would depend on your charge controller. So a lot of PWM charge controllers are going to only accept up to like 18.5 volts. So if you're sending it more than that, or more than its maximum, you could be wasting energy that you're harvesting up on your roof. So it's always a good idea to get your charge controller first and then get your panels based on that. So those are the reasons and things you need to know to be able to alter your volts and amps in your panel array. So let's go into hooking them up using both series and parallel in one array. So the biggest reason why you wouldn't want to have so many connected in, you know, all in series or all in parallel is because of shade. If you get the right amount of shade on just one panel, it can, you know, either lower the efficiency drastically or even shut off the other panels in that array. So it's safe to split them up into little sets that then come together in another set. And that's what I'm gonna do. I will have two sets connected in series and then connect those two mini arrays together in parallel. The two sets connected in series will yield 8.5 volt plus 8.5 volts equaling 37 volts and remain at 8.65 amps. These two sets will come together in parallel increasing the amps. 8.65 plus 8.65 equaling 17.3 amps and 37 volts for my final output. Referencing the amp passage chart for 35 feet of cable shows I need a 6 gauge wire. Off to the store! I got black to run my negative line and red wire to run my positive line. Now that I got my wires ran throughout the RV and uh, these ends are open and then the ends on the roof are open because I haven't put the panels together yet. Once I put the panels together, then these will suddenly become hot. So I'm going to snub them off with a little bit of electrical tape until I am ready to attach them to their new elements. So you can see that each panel comes with uh, this whole setup already and it's got a positive and a negative cable coming from it and it, You can see which one's positive because it's got little tags on so there's plus and minus so I have four panels and uh, These two 
are going to be connected positive negative and that's going to create one little mini array those two are going to be positive negative connect and so they're going to be kind of two sets now each set is going to have two other cables remaining that are not connected a positive and a negative and that one's going to have a positive and a negative and then con to connect those fully together that's when we go parallel and we do the remaining positive arm to the remaining positive arm and then the remaining negative arm to the remaining negative arm over here so for these series connections it's as easy as clicking those MC4 connectors together and then they're connected if you're gonna do this don't connect these unless you have a special disconnector because they need a special disconnector to come undone so, on my four panels, I'm only going to be doing this twice. One here, and then one on the other two. Okay, so here is my positive coming off of this panel from this little set. And then this that just fell back is the positive coming off of that panel for this set. And you can see that, sorry, bad camera angle. You can see that they barely reach. <laughs> just a couple inches apart. I'm going to have to uh, use some splicers and increase the length of probably just one of these arms. Once those are long enough, these are two positives, I'm going to be cutting off these MC4 connectors because they need to go positive to positive. And I'll use a splicer and it will connect to my red positive that's going to run down. And the same exact thing will happen for the negative wires. There's a negative on this one from this set, and then a negative on this one from this set. So before I go cutting with metal cutters into my wire, uh, I am going to cover these up with a big blanket because there's no way to actually turn off the panels. You just have to remove their functionality of harvesting electricity. So I have uh, my extension. This is going to be the extension from, well I'll need it to go on one negative, one positive, so that I can connect them together because they're skipping over one panel and uh, the cables just aren't long enough. So I'm going to connect them with these splicers. One will go in here and then another one will go in there. And then they tighten down with the bolts on top. And then I'm putting heat shrink over that and uh, once the heat shrink is over it, I'm going to caulk around the ends so that it's completely waterproof. And then I can connect the other side. And you may or may not notice, it's hard to notice, uh, the cable that's coming out of the solar panel is a 12 gauge, and then the one that I'm using as an extender is a 10 gauge. So you can always use a larger piece, a larger gauge to extend them, but you can never use a smaller one. So it needs to be big enough to carry what the panel's already carrying. So I had to get such a big thing of heat shrink because I needed it to fit around this large part here. But heat shrink doesn't get you know, it doesn't continue to shrink. It only kind of shrinks so much. So the wires on the end are a little too big for it. So I'm just going to use caulking to kind of seal that up permanently to make it more waterproof, hopefully. All right, so I did that for the negative and positive side. And now I am bringing the negative from these two panels to the negative of these two panels. And it's pretty much the same process using this guy, except I'm gonna have both of these go in one, and then my big long cable that I've ran through the RV is gonna come out the other side. So I've got my two negatives connecting the two mini arrays coming together, and now I'm going to, whoops, I guess I gotta open this, connect, bring in my big six gauge that's going to run down to the bin to the charge controller. Don't forget to slip on your heat shrink first. Now that I've got everything connected, I'm trying to use zip ties to kind of keep everything uh, tidy and out of the way. 
while also trying to tuck all my MC4 connections and my extension pieces kind of up out of any sort of extra rain. Once it's all connected, you can use these little clips that connect to a surface or more zip ties to keep your cables tidy. Then for your holes that you had to drill through any of your surfaces, you can use this expanding foam to kind of keep the cables in place. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to review the RV Solar Basics video series on my RV Solar Living playlist right here on my YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more videos in this series where I'm going to finish up all the tasks required for this RV Solar setup.